Welcome to Grace Notes, the weekly community affairs show with Town of Yorktown Supervisor Michael Grace. And I'm your moderator, Bruce A. Parr of Chase Media Group. And we just quickly always start the show uh, talking about upcoming events in and around town that uh, are of interest to you. And we want to remind you, and I know, Supervisor, it's one of your favorite and my favorite events every month. The first Friday is the Teen Center Open Mic Night, yep. uh, which is coming up uh, April 5th, Friday night, April 5th. Uh, if you want to check that out. Uh, and then there's, uh, on Saturday the 6th, this reminds me when I went to the University of Miami, basket making workshop. <laughs> we used to take basket weaving 101. In, in <laughs> that was the joke. That was the joke. Oh. If you're going to the University of Miami, they go, what are you taking, basket weaving 101? So maybe I should visit that, uh, that this Saturday for nostalgia's sake. And then the Yorktown Museum uh, has a microcosm of Yorktown's past. Well, that's, that should be interesting. I wonder if they mean like the last 10 years or <laughs> that would be even more interesting. Um, and then on Sunday, April 7th, the Hart Library Sunday Concert Series. Um, and also uh, something that, you know, is, is very serious, uh, part of my faith. Uh, this Sunday, many synagogues uh, have a Yom HaShoah, which is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Right, that's uh, on the 8th. Right? Yes, no, yeah. Right. Um, well, so, well, this one is... Uh, is actually Sunday. They could be on a couple of different days right. within, you know, within the same, uh, within the same week. And then also, and, and this also is very important, uh, on Sunday, April 14th, uh, Alliance for Save Kids has their Save a Life at symposium the YCC. at the YCC, yeah. which they've been doing the last few years. And hopefully we'll get them on, uh, we got to show prior to that to get them on. I, I'd like to yeah, yeah, to, that. To, yeah, 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 which we did last year with yeah. Mother Claire yeah. and yeah. yeah, no, that's always a really good uh, event. Um, and anyhow, you can go to uh, yorktownny.org and look at the community calendar, and that's all I'm doing. There's no magic to it. <laughs> I'm just reading off the community calendar and see all the different events. And I have to say, um, Supervisor, in the last year or so, the, the whole town website has really gotten a lot better. And uh, I know um, there is a person in, in, right in your... Right, and we're actually we're going to redesign it. Actually, right. We're in the process of actually redesigning it and improving it a little bit. Uh, 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 more than uh, and tr because it's chock full with a lot of information. Yes, right. It's just going to it, you would never know. It. Right. So we're 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 you know, going to change the look of it and some of the menus on it. So we're in the process of doing that because there is a lot of good information on. on and, the but website. it's gotten better anyhow. I mean, yeah. it's been updated more frequently, and there is a lot more information than there used to be on it. Yeah, but so. uh, and, and and we're working. We're still working on um, on digitizing most of our records. Right. And, and that way uh, you'll be able to almost access anything that would be on file and the old archived uh, files um, online, as well as take a look at current applications. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So, so it'll be like total visibility, as they call it. But, right. So I yeah. know you don't like the word transparency. <laughs> so, 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 but it's total visibility. Right. right. Yeah. So we're, 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 we're uh, actually, we're, we're now, we're taking a look at, uh, um, one of the things that, that happened last year is I got the building department had a bunch of boxes and they came up to me and they wanted us to budget for microfiching the records and I kind of got a chuckle out of it. I said, I don't, <laughs> know, who, I don't know if anybody knows what microfiching is anymore. Yeah, right. But, uh, and then we have a couple of old machines where the microfiche runs on and you can't even get parts for them anymore. So the idea is to start to not, not to spend that so good money after bad, but we're taking a look at digitizing. That's great. Every, yeah. All the records, right. and, and it, it makes them much more available. It helps in storage. We don't have to have buildings to keep the records in and everything else. So we're going to hopefully move forward on that this year. Things, uh, my experience from the last uh, 14, 15 months here is that things take a while to move through the system, uh, no matter who's in charge. <laughs> right, right. So, but uh, apropos to the um, community calendar, you have a couple of uh, 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 Artistic events on, which is yeah, at, yes. at the the uh, uh, open mic for the, for uh, the teen center and the right. and the affair over at the Hart Library. Library. And today um, we saw each other earlier at mm -hmm. the uh, Arts Westchester, Westchester luncheon. Yeah. Right. And one of the honorees there was Craig Schulman, yep. who is a York Yorktowner, Towner. and also has quite a incredible resume of. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he was uh, the Phantom in the Phantom, Phantom of the, the Opera, Opera. And, on uh, Broadway. On Broadway, right. right. He's, the, he's the only person who played, the only uh, performer to star on Broadway in Phantom, and Les Mis. Jekyll and Hyde, and Les Mis, all three, yeah. which is pretty yeah. amazing. 
He's got a great voice. Yeah, yeah, and he sang today. We heard him uh, sing. Yeah. Yeah, it was from, from, from Phantom of the Opera. Opera. Yeah, Music of the Night. Yeah, yeah Absolutely incredible. Yeah. But uh, it, it was great going to it and, and met a lot of good people, uh, David Ring and, and Anne Ring, Ring who right. were also Yorktowners. Yeah. And um, yeah, David is a uh, uh, top executive with First Niagara Bank, and they're like the major sponsor of uh, a major sponsor of Arts Westchester. Okay. Yeah. And they actually, uh, Niagara just took over uh, HSBC, HSBC right. um, with some of their branches, I guess, within the Northern Cor Corridor. So they're going to start, hopefully they'll be getting aggressive about putting some branches in in Yorktown. Um, but was, what, what was really nice about it, I, we, we had, we, we've talked in the past about really creating an arts, arts council, council yeah. or board in, in the town. And I'm glad Tom's here. We're yeah, well, we, we, we haven't introduced each. each. Well, yeah. our, our guest is Brian Marshausen of Yorktown News, right? Brian, welcome. And our mystery guest, <laughs> <laughs> no longer a mystery, everybody knows Tom DiCiaro, the owner of the winery at St. George, along with your brother. That's right. right. John. John. Yeah. And, and Tom just happens to, he's, he's, he's a, he was a surprise guest even to me today. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to have you. And, yeah. But apropos of that, I mean, one of the things that we, we, we had been talking about is creating an arts council, yeah. arts board, in order to, to reinvigorate the, the, what the, the, what is the theater at the YCC, to really bring that up to, you know, to, to uh, create new programs. Right. And, and one of the things, it was really interesting, and, and this will segue into the, Next discussion, but in looking at for a location for the dog park, one of the dog park locations was up by Granite Knolls, mm -hmm. and the next door neighbor uh, uh, politely raised some objections to that location be, being near, near their property. It ends up being uh, um, Barbara Koppel, who is oh the documentary uh, filmmaker. Yeah, she's yeah, a right. she's a, a, very, a very famous documentary yeah. filmmaker. She actually, I, I think, some of her documentaries were up for mm -hmm. Oscar nominations. Yeah, I think one of them may have won. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, yeah, she's yeah. she's one of the best known documentarians uh, yeah, in the world. And she's right up here in Yorktown. So you start digging through Yorktown. You, you know, you got Greg Schulman, you got Barbara Koppel, you got all these you know, incredible amount of talent, and 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 really within the arts. Yes, there, there is. Uh, and we even had Ace Freely at one point, but I guess he's maybe yeah. not be a... Not <laughs> We're trying to get him to play yeah. at the winery, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, so at least he was a resident of Yorktown for a while. But um, Ace Freely is the, uh, is the guitarist. The, the guitarist, the guitarist of Kiss. Kiss. Yeah. But um, you have an enormous amount of, of talent hidden away in Yorktown. And, and we have, to the envy of a lot of uh, uh, towns and municipalities, a theater, right. which most communities don't have right so the idea is to try to reinvigorate and right. create new programming for the ycc and to encourage it because we, as for instance we get the, the local restaurateurs in cooperation with the with the performing arts and the talent that we have in yorktown to right. start to really make yorktown a destination spot for talent but i'm glad you're here because your your, your brother john does all the booking at that uh, winery right for the most part yes. and um he gets and, he, and he's it. tough, by the way. He is. Wh which means you end up getting really good quality acts. Excellent, excellent he doesn't just uh, let anybody who walks in play. I tell you, he's very tough. What's interesting is that um, we probably get 10 requests a week yeah. to perform. And, and John screens everybody out. I mean, that's, yeah. not, what I, that's right. not what I'm good at. No, he's, he, but he's uh, great. He, at, yeah, he's he is. He has a great we, we just had Daisy Joplin there again um, this right. past Wednesday, which was a great show. Right. And and yeah. for those people that don't know who Daisy Joplin is, she's a, a virtuoso violinist who actually, what was the song she was playing, The Who? Uh, she uh, uh, she played Teenage, no, no, Teenage Wasteland. She did Teenage Wasteland there by The Who, but that was yeah. the way she ended the concert. But, you know, a lot of classical music, yeah. but really amazing yeah, stuff. Yeah, she is. And she's a great show show woman. Oh, God. You know, what puts on a great show. Yeah. And yeah, she, when you had the uh, 100th anniversary uh, concert, um, her and uh, our Sa uh, Justin Honorable Sal Lagonia, Lagonia yeah. yes, performed together. Performed together. It was absolutely incredible. So, uh, you know, one of the things, and, and we have Brian here as, as well, because, uh, and so Brian can ask us some questions, but uh, also want to get the word out to, mm -hmm. the, to the public that we really want to do this. Um, so as much as you can give that press that we, we really want to get started in earnest in, in doing this arts council so uh that anybody that would be interested in 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 joining it in the in the and uh working on the formation the, yeah. uh, of this arts council which should contact my uh, office, office the supervisor's yeah. office in mary capocha right. 
and we'll start getting working on yeah, it. We, uh, an agenda. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was great talking to Anne Ring because yeah. um, she's very enthusiastic about it. So I, I think it'll be. Yeah. Uh, yep. I think it'll, it's one of the things that we want to do to uh, create some vitality, especially in the Heights area between um, and the talent that's uh, uh, native to Yorktown, and also to uh, hopefully encourage people to come on out and enjoy the fine dining. Right. In, in Yorktown as well. So, and and just mentioning that they're sort of combining it with the calendar uh, earlier in the show. Uh, Spamalot, Monty Python Spamalot is going to be this month at Yorktown Stage, starting April thirteenth. So if you go to YorktownStage.org, you could find out about that. But that that's the kind of show you don't see a lot at all in local no, productions, that's and true. so that should be really good. Yeah. yeah, and I encourage people to go because the the quality of the productions is excellent. Yeah, excellent yeah. It, it really is, and for what the ticket prices, it's it's, no, it's like it's, yeah, nineteen to twenty six dollars. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. uh, for a night out locally, uh, to yeah. take in a really good show, and hopefully also patronize some of the uh, eating establishments right. in the in the Heights area. Uh, we, 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 this is what we want to do. Uh, you know, I, I talked to Anne Ring today about one of the things that we want to do and is, 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 uh, uh actually put a movie screen and right, projector and yeah. into the theater and start to start to use it that way as well. Oh, that's well. a great idea. Oh yeah. 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 We just need a bit of money for that. Yeah. yeah. And so we're hoping, hopefully we're, we're, we're looking for, for the money or the, or the, uh, uh, um, endowments in order to do that. But I think one of the things would be great to just do a, 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 with, uh, I haven't talked to Barbara Koppel about it, so I maybe get myself in trouble, but maybe just, uh, you know, as a, as a native Yorktown, or maybe yeah. do a, a, yeah. a, a film festival of well, her, of her material. Yeah, that's material. a good idea. That is so, a good idea. Um, yeah. So there's, there's great, you know, there's great stuff that can happen, and we just uh, try, to, try to make it happen. I'll give a pitch for the uh, Arts West just to Council anyhow. Uh, one of the things that, that did come across is that they a lot of the funding, the, the government funding for these um, programs has have been cut and, yeah. and seriously cut, uh, notwithstanding even the sequestering of, uh, of, of money, but right. even before that. So uh, uh, they mentioned that I think they've lost $258,000 in funding. Right. And uh, so they're making a push for some, for some donations. So whoever wants to, I don't know, Tom, if you can... If you can um, go in, uh, zero in on that, that's artswestjustin.org. I think it's, uh, and um, for those pe people who would like to donate and be patrons of the arts, uh, performing arts and otherwise, uh, please feel free to give them a call. Yeah. The, uh, uh, one of the other. Yeah, that, by the way, they had quite a turnout at this thing. Yeah, yeah it's got to be 500 oh, yeah. people Rob, easily. The right? county executive was there, Rob Astorino, and, and also, for people who know, even if you know a little about opera, we were like shocked when they said, oh, and Roberta Peters is here. Roberta Peters is one of the most famous opera singers of the last 40, 50 years. Well, the other gentleman that was, was an honor, he was this guy, Tony Vaccaro. He was, that, that was unbelievable. He's a 91-year-old gentleman who was a, a photographer. World uh, War II World photographer. War II yeah. photographer, and I guess he... And La Duce, is that how I say it? El, du El, du El Duce. Duce. El Duce. Photographs of El yeah. Duce, yeah. everyone oh, else. Yeah. So, uh, you know, really, they're re really an incredible bunch of people, and um, the thing is that th that kind of talent exists in this town, and hopefully, will move towards uh, creating a, a real, real destination venue for all sorts of talent, um, and, and not to take away from the destination venue that is the winery, which has great talent as well. I mean, they really do. But we're bringing talent from everywhere, though. So, yeah. and the. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, there's a couple of things that were in the news o over the last couple of weeks. Um, one was the Holland Sporting Club. I want to clear the air of some of that and also uh, kind of run down the, the, the issues with the, with the building over at, at, um, at Trump Towers. Uh, as to the Holland Sporting Club, um, there was a lot of hyperbole in, in, um, in regard to what was going on up there, plain and simple. Um, the building department, um, um, uh, highway department, and town staff uh, re re removed 14 buildings up there that had been in sort of dilapidated shape, um, which seems to be the part for the course for property owned or taken by the town of Yorktown, which I'll get to in a second. But um, we've taken the property and uh, it goes fallow, uh, unfortunately, up there, which was Holland Sporting Club, which everybody will universally agree it's one of the one of the most exquisite pieces of real estate within the town of Yorktown. 
um, had, a, had, had buildings up there, which were at the time that the town of Yorktown had taken them over in ownership, had still had some uh, viability. Unfortunately, through years and years of, of indecision as to what to do with the buildings, they went into a state of disrepair. Right. We were being vandalized uh, and vagrants were living in them, uh, much to the chagrin of a local community. So eventually the town decided that uh, the best course of action was to take them down, which I, I think had they acted on it years earlier may not have been the case. Um, nonetheless, they were taking down and it was a, 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 a formidable task that was performed admirably by the highway department. Again, it was 14 buildings and I think 40 to 50 dumpsters worth of material that was taken out of there. Uh, during the process, in the two main buildings, which had uh, underground foundations, some of the debris, unfortunately, wasn't fully removed. So there was some board, some wood, some construction debris from the buildings that were on the property already that may not have been removed and raked through. Um, we had a councilman that was very passionate about it. Um, and nonetheless, fast forward, the EC came by and uh, asked us to go through the two foundations to remove whatever was left, and, and, and the highway department did. Um, it took, I think, a day and a half to, to do it, uh, and they raked through the piles and have removed all the remaining debris, uh, which was less than a uh, packer truck full of debris. And off it went, if everybody can calm down, it went off to the dump where it was properly disposed of, and most of it was wood, and if you were up there watching them, I mean, they were basically going through piles of right. wood chips, pulling up little boards here and there and throwing them into the packer. Um, there was nothing uh, um, nothing hazardous, no hazardous material on the site. The town had to do and did do a survey of any potentially uh, uh, environmentally toxic or hazardous material that was on the site. Uh, asbestos had been identified, and this town spent $80,000 removing uh, asbestos shingles from the roofs of uh, several of the buildings up there. And then on top of that, because it took so long for even that to occur, that some of the roofs collapsed, actually did perimeter cleanups all around all the buildings after the roofs were taken down. So uh, anything else that was identified as, as having any uh, um, noxious uh, as being a noxious substance was removed from the site. There were there was a hue and cry that there were still oil tanks up there. They were removed in 2007 and decommissioned, and decommissioned slips were all uh, over oh, at the And by the way, where did they think the oil tanks were? Under the ground? Well, they, you know, there was a, somebody, you know, there was, there was one councilman that, that claimed that they hadn't been removed or that they were still there or that we were, and, um, and uh, the paperwork wasn't with the, in, I guess he was looking in the wrong places for the paperwork. The paperwork was in Park and Recs because it was a town park and it was over in Parks and Recs. So they were all removed. Everything was removed o over there. Um, so we're all clear uh, w with the Holland Sporting Club and DEC didn't even think it was a big issue, but decided, you know, better safe than, yeah. you know. Do you know when they're going to be visiting the site? I think they may have already gone back up there. Oh, and they've already yeah. listed the notice? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if they haven't, they'll be doing it probably within the next day or so. But th that's all cleared up. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, trying to set the record straight. There was, a, I, I, unfortunately, I think it, 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 uh, I'm learning um, that I relive the uh, Charles game of telephone all over again because something is said at one end, by the time it comes out the other <laughs> end, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, also with the Holland Sporting Club, at, 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 at one point, um, to the chagrin of some, I suggested because of the availability of uh, fill that was coming from the 202 widening. The fill isn't coming from 202. It's coming from the bank, uh, uh, the, the hill that's abutting 202. Um, there's concern as to whether it's clean or not. It's all virgin soil. There's nothing ever that's been built there. This is a part of an old mountain. <coughs> a lot of the soil has been tested. It's bank run. Nothing has ever been on, over, on top, in, through <laughs> the soil. It's all virgin soil all clean fill idea was that Holland Sporting Club presented itself as a possibility to use that to put ball fields in. Um, the neighborhood disagreed. Uh, the Parks and Rec Commission disagreed, but hopefully we now will have a plan to put the property to use and and quickly. But, um, well, but, but although I just want to ask you something, Supervisor, I mean, uh, certainly uh, any parcel that's 
within anybody's neighborhood, you know, you're, you're concerned about have a special interest in. But I know we talked about this on a previous show. It's town property, so it's not, it doesn't belong only to the people who live in that neighborhood. I mean, and what about having a hearing or other people in the town weighing in, whether or not they live in that area, right, is not really the issue. Well, I, 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 I agree, that, and, and this is going to bring us into the, the larger discussion tonight, is that um, what happens with these things is that you, you as in the nature of the beast, is that you're going to do something in some local, Location, right. some neighborhood, right. and 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 what what happens is you've got people that these small constituencies, which are the the, the real the the very you know uh, sur- the surrounding property owners or neighbors, who uh, we try to be very mindful of, but but may have different ideas than what the the town needs to do for its needs. Um, since I've been in office, and even before I've been in office, there's been a bit great demand for ball fields. Yeah, yeah. And, and, this, and we've right. had this whole controversy over the last couple of months regarding the school budget and the school charging the, the, the clubs, recreational yeah. clubs uh, for use of their fields, and, and the recreational clubs feel somewhat hostage to the school district because there's no other alternatives for their fee- to, to, to right. their recreational programs. The schools, on the other hand, are feeling the pressures of the 2% cap and everything else in order to look for revenue raising. They uh, want to impose what the school thinks is a very modest, reasonable fee on the on the sports clubs to use their facilities, and the sports clubs uh, feel that any fee, no matter how modest, is is being taken out on the backs of the kids and children and families that are already paying into the school for taxes and right. the town for taxes, and, and and both have very valid uh, points of view. The problem is, is when 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 you when you have these divergent uh, opinions on, on sometimes very simple matters, people get entrenched into their ideological corners mm-hmm. and the debate breaks down and sometimes get, can get a little bit ugly and also the, the hyperbole comes in and the spin comes in and everything else. So I look at as as my function as town supervisor is on for, you know, I can't please every little every ideological uh, um, constituency, I have to look with overall beneficial for the whole entire town because all these, you know, especially when it comes to recreational properties uh, and, and properties held by the town, um, they're not purchased by just neighborhood prop- uh, property owners' money. They're purchased by the entire town tax, right. tax base right. dollars, and they're really looked to be put to some type of community use so the whole community can enjoy them because the whole community is paying for them. And, and we also have greater community needs as well. So you have to try to balance what the greater community needs are with the, obviously putting anything to use um, other than what it's currently uh, put to um, may make a change in the neighborhood. So yeah. we, 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 we try to address what the, what, the, what, the, what the very local impacts may be for doing anything, but we have to move ahead on it. And, and, and one of the reasons um, I asked the press to be here tonight as well is just to try to educate the public at what I look at as as supervisor, what I see in terms of the overall picture of the town, um, rather than having very uh, more the, the more myopic view of being just within the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Right. And 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 in talking with people, I, I thought that one of the things that will kind of give you an idea of of of, of how the debate can degenerate, or, and 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 how people can get entrenched to ideological corners, rather than talk to have a conversation for things. I thought was the best way to do it is through pictures. <laughs> right. And and uh, so Tom, I'm going to ask you to uh, pan over to the board. You want me to pan over to the oh, board? Yeah. I guess, oh yeah. Yeah. Tom, yeah. The, yeah. Oh him, Tom. Oh him and the Tom. other Tom. Yeah. Uh, you, you wanted me to point. I, you, I, I, I thought, thought I got be, a new job. I think it'd be Vanna White. <laughs> I, 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 now we don't, I don't have a monitor here, so I don't know what, where you are, Tom. But if you top left, top left and if so, if, if uh, should be what should be on your camera now is the pictures of the old hotel at the corner of uh, Route 202 in the Taconic Parkway, which is the site potentially to be developed by Costco. And just so the public understands, uh, because uh, for most of us, we drive by 202 or the Deconic, and from the Deconic, we see the roofs of these buildings, and from 202, we don't really see much. But if you go down the site 
and look at what is on that site. Uh, I've got six pictures there that are representative of what is now presently existing on the site. And as far as I'm concerned, um, as someone that is representing the town of Yorktown, I find that what's on that site is an absolute disgrace. Um, and this is not in any way meant to disparage the owner of the site, because I think the owner of the site now is looking, well, trying to move forward and doing a redevelopment of the site. But this, if you, if you take a look at what's there, um, this is what has been a two-year fight um, to, uh, uh, within the town, uh, basically uh, giving resistance to the plan to remove what is a god-awful uh, uh, mess. Um, the site is in a pristine site. It's fully disturbed. It is, a, it is, a, it is quite disgusting. Um, the buildings are not necessarily secure. Um, uh, some of the doors are open or what's not boarded up, but it is a absolute, uh, uh, you know, it, no town should uh, be proud of having a site that looks like that within its borders. It's, it's plain and simple. Um, the plan is to redevelop the site, uh, albeit with a Costco, which is what some people object to, but this is what the fight uh, and the resistance to kind of what we call, you know, what I would say is to preserve what's there is ridiculous. We have to move ahead. And Costco may not be what everybody envisioned for the site, and there may be another, uh, I, I think at one point there was another plan for the site which died a death, which was more like a retail village. Right, yes. Right. Um, but, but and, and who knows what the resistance was to that, and maybe that's why it went away. But the bottom line is the town can't control who's looking to invest, but thank God somebody is looking to invest. And it really, this site cries out for uh, a redevelopment, and, and uh, it certainly cries out to, you know, th that we need to do something with it. Um, in the middle, uh, uh, to give, uh, the contrast is that's, that uh, some of the same constituency that fights very vigorously to keep Costco out there's also, if you pan to the middle of the board there, uh, is, which is two pictures of the uh, Trump sales office at the corner of 6th and Borgia Street. And in contrast, here you have a very attractive, well-built um, building, which is vacant, and um, the, uh, uh, there are certain people that, that are involved with it that would like to see and are willing to uh, have that building donated for some type of community use. Not only would that building be donated for community use, but to the terms that it would need to be in any way retrofitted, um, they would be willing to do it. Um, uh, Who, well, you're saying Capelli would Capelli do it? Would they would pay for it. Pay, pay for the, pay for the re retrofitting of the right. building to whatever use that the town would want to put it to. The, uh, let me debunk some of the... Um, rumor that's out there it the building was um, designated as a temporary sales office um, and built in order to sell the uh, uh, units that are in the back right. um, the the, it, 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 the building was designated on the site plan as a temporary sales office and was there there are, are requirements that the building be raised after a certain amount of units would be sold it would be a shame uh, to raise this building um, and uh, it, 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 the, the point I was making to someone, what I really should do is I should, you know, the public has to see what on the one hand is the old hotel, and on the other hand, the Trump building, and the caption under the picture is, which is the building that the town of Yorktown wants to have raised? Right. And, and it's the Trump, Trump <laughs> building, not the hotel. Not the, uh, and of course, uh, we should hotel. clarify, because when people hear words sometimes, we mean, you, you mean R-A-Z-E, right? Right, right, right. Taken down. Taken down. You know take right. down. Yeah, right. So the 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 uh, in, in going back to the Trump building, um, it it's a uh, it, it it has the it's a it, it, there's also rumor and everybody says well you know we we heard it's worth a million we heard it's worth three million and we we're not buying any of it. Bottom line, it, it's about an eight thousand square foot building. 
It, although designated and denominated on the play plan as a temporary sales office, it's not a tempor it's not a building bent built to be temporary. It's a building that fully complies with all the building codes. In order to have it been occupied in the first place, it had to right. comply with all the codes. It's a fully functional, uh, sound, usable building, and, and it had to be built that way in order for them to occupy it in the first place. So it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Uh, uh, it isn't built on on, right. on on toothpicks. It's built of the. So the te temporary is just a term on the plans. It's, it wasn't built. Right. The building right. wasn't built to be temporary. The building wasn't built to be temporary. The build. The building right. is a permanent building. It is a solid, well constructed, up to uh, completely up to building codes. Oh, actually, right. it's actually sprinkled, sprinkled uh, sprinklers in it. Hmm. It's got sewer and and, and water. Um, it's got it, fire sprinklers in there. Fire sprinklers in there because it had to be because of the occupancy. Um, it, the I, I, the idea I floated was that I've got I've got my parks and rec department actually in temporary tra trailers over in Sparkle Lake on, on parking lot towards the lake, which is another town park. They're, they're occupied there. This has office space already, and, and so. But when I mention that, I guess everybody's imagination goes to where parks and recs. We're going to have parks and recs in there, which means that we're going to have every all the pickup trucks and the mowers, and the, that's not what it was supposed to be, just for the administrative executive offices for parks and recs and, right. and using the rest for community purposes. Um, and and, and the, the point being is that uh, we, have to, we have to begin to have a conversation um, as to what, we, what, what direction we're taking in the town of Yorktown, because otherwise, quite frankly, if, if I step back and look at it, and I think, you know, if this just becomes, this starts to, when you look at what, on the one hand, what people are resisting to take down. On the one, one hand, everybody's fighting to take down. And you take a look at, I think the public needs to know. And the conversation has to begin. And there's no better way of sh showing the contrast than in pictures. Um, because otherwise, then you start, if you, if, you, if you actually look at it, then you start to scratch your head and understand what the lunacy of government is. If this is on the one hand, we're taking down a building. That's beautiful. That yeah. would be beautiful. On the other hand, fighting to, you know, to resist taking down a building that should have been taken down a long time ago. As far as the cost of construction of the building, because everybody says, well, you said it's $4 million, then it goes to $2 million, goes to $3 million, and there's laughter in the background, people poke fun at it. Bottom line is, for the town, of, for, for a municipality, to replicate the construction of that Trump building would be millions of dollars. And that's because for a municipality to build the building and to retrofit it to everything else, we have to comply with, with, with the WICS law and prevailing wage law and all sorts of other requirements that a private developer doesn't. So, so the cost to the town is, is multiple times what it would be to a private developer. So if it's a million dollar building mm -hmm. by a private developer, it's a two to three million dollar uh, project for the a municipality. Again, it, it, the, the idea here is that we have to start to have the conversation. If you pan over, over to the right, Tom, I will show you what else is in the inventory of property owned by the town of Yorktown. And, and, and if, you, if, if you're over on the far right, Tom, uh, the, all right, the top picture is the back of the Shallow Creek Golf Course building. Oh, Second yeah. picture down is the front of the Shallow Creek uh, golf course building and the picture in the middle the third picture is the entranceway to what is the shallow creek golf course property mm -hmm. shallow shallow creek golf course property is property that was taken by the town of yorktown is town of yorktown parkland right if i don't know if you can zoom in tom but if you can zoom in um in front of the parking lot to the shallow creek uh, property is a sign that indicates that the property is owned by the town of Yorktown, and in red block it says no trespassing. <clears throat> so this is a uh, a piece of property that's been taken off the pa the, the uh, uh, tax rolls, and is now within the inventory of parkland for the town of Yorktown, uh, for which all of the town of Yorktown uh, residents have contributed, have paid for, or are suffering the loss of tax revenue having it off the tax rolls. And we have it behind a fence with a chain on it and a sign, no trespassing. Now, this is one of our parklands, which you are, I guess, not allowed to be on. If you go further on down, the next two pictures are pictures of what is Granite Knolls, which is another piece of property purchased by the town of Yorktown to the tune of $2.8 million. These are the barns that are on the property that now the town is taking down. Uh, again, and now I'm going to ask Tom to you know, kind of focus, I'll focus in over here. Um, 
what I do have also have pictures of, um, and additional pictures of 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 Granite Knolls and the uh, this is the the barn at Granite Knolls. Uh, Tom, is this okay if I hold it like this? And this is the other barn at Granite Knolls. Um, uh, another picture of the barn at Granite Knolls. And uh, just so everybody understands, we have uh, went out on a bid for dumpsters, and the highway department's going to take this down. So if anybody objects to that, they <laughs> can gear up for it. But we take, we're having a highway department take it. That's the picture of the old hotel. Um, in, in terms of, of the old hotel, if we continue on further down 202, it, it, the, the town is graced with the um, old car dealership, which is vacant. Do you have, a pic do you have that, Tom? We have the uh, vacant lot, which is what where Trumpers used to be. Mm -hmm. We have the vacant used car lot further on down the road. Uh, and we have the, uh, um, my, I have my Love My Kids building, which is now vacant, but hopefully is now going to be, I, I understand that the Little Sorrentos is going to uh, take it over as a, and, 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 and we open it up as a restaurant. Oh. And then we have the old car dealership, which is a Chevy dealership, which is all vacant. Um, then you have the other piece, where, which is next to the Shell station, which is all vacant. And then I had pictures, unfortunately, didn't come out. Um, of the property on the north side of 202, which is owned by the county, which is their old bus shelter, and, and you have to take a ride down there, too, because that's a, a god-awful eyesore of an old concrete uh, block building where they have garbage trucks and a big open field, which is just uh, uh, another uh, 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 field of weeds. So this is, this is our, this is our, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is Yorktown. I always t tell everybody this is Yorktown's version of downtown Detroit, which basically was the strip from 202 from the Deconic to, to Lexington Avenue. And, and I, I think it, it, what people have to understand is that the condition of that commercial strip, which is really one of the, uh, the, our last and, and only developable commercial strips within the town, is in, in my mind again a, a disgrace and for the people of the town of yorktown they have to understand that having that kind of plight underneath in within the four corners of their town it devalues everything within the town including their own right. property values right. and and uh what i it, what my, my call is that i think the people out of the town of yorktown have to recognize um that we have to begin to have the conversation for the redevelopment of 202, which means that everyone has to come out of their respective ideological corners and try to meet in the middle to put together a, a plan um, that uh, will begin to uh, reclaim these properties and beautify the town of Yorktown. The same conversation has to begin with the town-owned parcels. I, again, I, I, we showed you pictures of Granite Knolls, showed you pictures of um, Shallow Creek. Um, th this is a, a picture. I don't know, Tom, if you can get into, uh, zoom in on this one. This is a picture of a, a, a town-owned parkland, which is known as Tall Timbers. And I'm going to tell you, it, it's what's remarkable, there are people within the town government that didn't even know we owned this. Uh, here's another picture of it, and here's another picture of it, and this is up off of a Midget Lane in the Mohegan Highlands, and it again is a it, a, a parcel of land that the town's owned for, uh, I think going back two decades because I think it was town attorney when we foreclosed on it for in rem uh, failure to pay taxes, and uh, there it sits with a a sign of. Uh, a town of Yorktown, Parks and Rec uh, land, uh, no dumping or uh, vandalism. And I guess the no dumping signs don't work very well because it, what it's become it has become a neighborhood dump. dump. Mm. Um, again, there's another piece of property on Gomer Street, which is the Solomon Farms property. And if you go there, you'll see uh, and, and look deep enough about... Uh, 20 feet in, you'll see a sign that says this is town of Yorktown property. 
and the no littering, no d dumping sign, and, and everything between the curb and the sign is dump. Yeah. Um, again, the point being that the town has an enormous amount of, of, of inventory of, of lands that are, at this point, uh, going fallow and continue to go fallow until we start to take a, a real look at the inventory of what we have and start to be you know, wise um, um, stewards of the property that we do own. Because in my mind, at, at Town of Yorktown, uh, it, 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 I, I took 50 pictures the other day with touring the town, and, and uh, these sites are sites that you know, do, 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 do you know, they have the potential of devaluating all our properties. Uh, and the town of Yorktown is blessed with great natural resources, great, uh, you know, hamlet centers. Um, and, and, and we need to start to have the conversation and a, can have a promulgated, discussed master plan for what we're doing with all these properties in order to begin to move Yorktown forward. I don't want Shallow Creek to be another building that the highway department or whomever is going to take down. Uh, we have to take a look at a, a, a master plan for our park and recreational purposes. We have good, we have the potential for ball fields up at Granite Knolls, which we need to move forward on. Uh, and we need to have on file the plans that we are going to move ahead on so that when other, uh, when opportunities do come around, which is such as the free fill from the 202 site and other places, that we can mobilize our forces to start to put together and create what it is, uh, is our master plan for park and recreational land. Um, it, it, likewise, um, we have to begin, and I think it's very important uh, that, that we um, carefully design and plan and encourage the redevelopment of our commercial corridors, which is our last source of a tax base, non-residential tax base. Uh, and, and to begin to have constructive conversation about it all, which means that uh, uh, those people that are stuck in their ideological corners have to come out and decide and, and look towards compromise. I, I get discussion with a lot of people about uh, their fear that 202 will turn into Central Avenue. Uh, let me allay that by advising everyone, and if I had the time, I would have put a map together tonight that there's almost 500 acres of town-owned parkland north of 202, which runs from the Granite Knowles property to the Sylvan uh, uh, Glen property uh, on Lexington Avenue. Um, there is only two real properties on the north side of 202 that are developable. One is a, a state land corp, and one is the county-owned uh, property, which is a, and I wish I had pictures of it. I do on my iPhone, but I don't know how to get them up, um, which is a god-awful site. To begin with, an underutilized and a site which has got county trucks in there, garbage trucks, and I think at one point it may have been used as a, a storage yard for the car dealerships along 202. So um, the point being is that um, one of the things when I entered office was uh, to try to have this conversation, uh, or at least to begin the conversation, and it seems that every time that, that we begin to have a conversation or bits and pieces of a conversation, the, the trials game of telephone comes in and out come of the other end comes an alarmist uh, view of that. I'm going to dump 86,000 yards of fuel on the Holland Sporting Club and we're going to, by uh, the town, uh, you're seeing Costco get developed, it's going to turn 202 into Central Avenue. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And that, uh, you know, the one, one, actual uh, piece of architecture, uh, you know, one of the better pieces of architecture on the northern strip of Route 6 being the Trump building, all well, that has to come down because we need a gazebo and a track there. And, and, and how dare I suggest anything else? And, and so the point being is that I think that we have to ha begin to have constructive conversation. And um, it is my hope that uh, we can begin to have that conversation and, and, and have it on a, on a much broader level and including the, 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 the larger community, which was the point that we started with. In, in, you know, I know with the Trump building, uh, the people that are in the Trump Towers are very sensitive to it. 
and I understand that. And 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 uh, uh, we would be very, uh, it'd be uh, far be it for me to uh, want to create them any kind of anxiety about it. But the idea is that at least let's begin to have the conversation. Maybe there is some ability to compromise. If there's not, and th that building has to come down, I personally think that it would be a shame that that would be a resource that uh, would not be available to some other use other than to to raise it. Um, conversation with 202 is that we have to begin to do something. And wh while it might not be all the development that all of us would like and agree on, the bottom line is we've got to begin the ball rolling so that th what we can do is have a rehabilitation of what is the last uh, available commercial strip within the town. And um, that's going to require uh, road improvements, which need to be done, because that's the reason why most of those properties have a very difficult time getting off the ground. Um, is because the left hand turns in or out of this, the properties along 202. So we 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 still want to and, and vigorously push the redesign of 202. So it it does accommodate you know decent development along 202. Uh, we would like to attract something other than retail commercial uh, development. We would like to see uh, either some type of industry or, or office industry, a professional industries coming in. The thing is, you have to market Yorktown, and Yorktown is a very marketable place because it's got a great parks and recs department. It's got great resources. It's in a, a very beautiful area. It's got great schools. It has an enormous amount of uh, services and resources that a lot of communities don't have, a la our theater, which hopefully will be revitalized in a, in a great way. Yorktown has a lot to market itself to, to hopefully some type of you know entrepreneurship um, uh, business that would want to locate, have corporate headquarters here, have you know, be an employer type of you know non-residential employer um, uh, based uh, uh, business, um, and and you want to market it that way. We don't want to market it 202 to become car dealership after car dealership. We don't want to. We we would like to see it do something a higher caliber commercial kind of real uh, development there. So. Uh, and there's some great opportunities for this town, uh, but the, the, in order to realize those opportunities, I think we have to begin to have constructive conversation rather than knee-jerk conversation that arises out-of-pocket constituencies that don't necessarily like what they hear through at the end of the Charles game of telephone. Um, so uh, the, the reason why I invited the press here is that I, 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 I felt compelled that I need um, to engage the larger town of Yorktown, the, everyone in the town of Yorktown, to get involved in the conversation, um, and 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 that is you know those people that are, live here you know and and sometimes don't have the ability to be part of right. the conversation right. uh, because of work constraints, uh, 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 commuting constraints family constraints or whatever and, and we don't necessarily hear from a lot of them we hear right, from we right. hear from always uh, the select few and i think that the, the the larger part of yorktown needs to get involved in the conversation i want to begin the conversation i've got no interest in dominating the conversation but i but i but i think that we need to begin to have it because the lunacy in my mind is just in the two pictures between and Tom, you can, if you do scan it again, this is what, you know, asking the question, you know, rhetorically and somewhat maybe disingenuously, but never ask, never, nevertheless, the question is asked, which is the building that the town of Yorktown is looking to take down? And, and with that, I'll turn it, Brian, if you've got any questions. Or... Uh, well, in regards to the Shallow Creek property, this might have been before your time as supervisor, but... Was there ever an agreement, I believe, in 2011 to bring like a paintball type of thing in there? Whatever happened to that? Uh, yeah, there was. The, the problem, the, the, the issue was the legal framework under which that was going to operate. Okay. And, and it didn't make a, a sense under the, under the parameters of the, what the legal framework was for him to make the investment that he was looking to make in it uh, and for the town to allow him to, to, to operate under the terms and conditions of, of, of that contract. And, and essentially what was the killer of it was that the town was going to base its rent on the, of the use of the property based upon gross receipts right. of, the, uh, uh, of sales. 
which me meant that the <laughs> that the operator of the of the paintball uh, operation would have to open his books to the town of Yorktown for auditing, because we were required to audit him, auditing him to audit him in order to know what our proper rents were. The thing is, if I think it was five percent of the gross profits or something, so. It costs us about twenty twenty five thousand dollars a year to maintain that piece of property. So if the quick math is five times twenty five is oh five percent, it get a hundred thousand five thousand is a hundred is five percent of a hundred. So you get to twenty five. The guy would have to make gross profits of twenty five hundred thousand dollars for us to recover the cost of maintaining his operation, and it was twenty five thousand. So then, if you rolled it out to the public and said what what we're doing is, the, the, we got a guy, gentleman in there that's making five hundred thousand dollars a year. So we can collect our cost of of maintaining it, which is twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> They're going to want to know, well, wh how come he's making the other four hundred seventy five thousand on our dime? So the idea is, it's really makes money on it for the town to make money. It'd be ahead of the game beyond our maintenance costs. Then you want this guy to make seven hundred fifty or a million dollars a year, and then he would have been making eight hundred thousand dollars to our. Yeah, so and that would cause a you and cry. If right. if on the other hand he was making both receipts less than five hundred thousand dollars, then we were subsidizing. His income under five hundred thousand. Let's say he makes four hundred thousand dollars. He was paying us twenty. He's making three eighty, and we would be saying, "Well, we're we're not only getting only twenty thousand, but we're subsidizing the other five for him to make." Fee. Understand where it would have gone, and, and, and so the the idea is that tying the arrangement to a revenue, a revenue loan right. was next to impossible, and and he wanted to make. An investment into the physical plant. So he was going to put a couple hundred thousand dollars into the physical plant. Now you get into what I was talking about earlier, the issues about a municip municipally owned property. Right. Municipal owned property, if he goes to make an investment in the physical plant of what's Shallow Creek, then it becomes a public work because it's a work on a public building. It becomes a public work. Now you're subject to the Wix law, you're subject to prevailing wage. So if he wanted to do their sweat equity and get his guys to do it or hire someone to do it, that couldn't be happen. You'd have to go out to bid. You'd have to go out to contract. You'd right. have to go pay prevailing wage. So now your hundred thousand dollar renovation turns into a three hundred thousand dollar renovation, and and or that somebody's going to be at the end of the day may be violative of the law. So it it it, it, it th these are all the legal problems dealing with the municipality. So either the municipality has to take the investment in it and then rent lease it on a, a you know a wholesale. Uh, on a set rent, or it really doesn't work. So there, there, there are things, you know, that because the municipality owns it and runs it or has interest in it, these become legal problems for anybody that goes to deal with the municipality. Um, Shallow Creek, the problem with Shallow Creek is it runs on a septic system in a wetland, so it's only, you can't even run a dishwasher in the place. I heard it floods a lot, too. Well, it is in a floodplain, but we have the ability to hook it up to sewer. So if you get to hook mm -hmm. the building up to sewer, all of a sudden now you have a viable building. Right. And, and then at that point, there's things that we can do. And I, I know the Rec Commission, um, uh, and, and, uh, God forbid I suggest anything um, contrary to their vision, but, um, uh, you know, they, they have a, and I, I say that, you know, because we took a lot, I took a lot of heat with the Holland Sporting Club, which was, I think, right. we, well, unnecessary. Um, they have uh, they have an idea of bringing someone in to run back as a golf course. Again, it, the devil is in the details as to what what the arrangement is, and what happens is that you, that you can have all be very well intentioned to what that arrangement is, but when you start to get into the detail as to who's making the investment, how that investment's being made, on, on what auspices it's being made, and how it's going to be operating, when it comes to a, a, a municipality, everything changes because it's the alternative universe here. And what do I mean by that? It's because the town has a fiduciary obligation to the taxpayers. So we're under constraints that other normal, you know, if you want to play with your own money, you can play with your own money. But I don't, this is what we play with, or I shouldn't say play with, but what we deal with is taxpayer money. So I can't do certain things with tax, you know, with right. taxpayers' money or taxpayer owned resources or taxpayer owned uh, lands. We have to. We, we're constrained, so that always becomes the issue. What, 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 what? Uh, I think um, uh, has to be, and and this may be a function of a lot of changes in administration over the years. And I think it is because we bought, we, they got tall timbers, 10, 15 years ago. Half the, you know, and uh, uh, some of the town board, and a lot of the people in the town don't even know we own it. And, and uh, with Solomon Farms on on Gomes Street. I don't know that anybody knows that we own it, but right. until you see the sign back there, 
Um, a shallow Creek is always, I get lots of inquiry about shallow Creek. This is a great site. It's a great yeah. location. It's it. So, but, but you know, what are we doing with it? Where are we going? You know, Granite Knowles, they spent, uh, you know, $2.8 million to purchase that property. Uh, most of it, which is, uh, so anyhow, I'm getting a single. We got to cut it short and we have been here awful long, but, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I just want, I wanted to use this forum tonight to, to make the point that, uh, we got to we got to be, begin the conversation. So everybody's okay. waving at me. I'm going to get. You know, <laughs> They're doing the wave. As long as it's not the Bronx <laughs> wave. wave, I'm okay. That's but right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thank you, Brian, for coming because I, I felt it important to at least try to get the word out. And I appreciate you. Your, your participation this evening. And Tom, thank you for stopping by unexpectedly. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yes. And Bruce, yes. thank you as always. <laughs> right. And uh, that about wraps it up uh, for the show. So thank you for watching Grace Notes. Be sure to watch us next time and every time because Yorktown is your town. Thank you. <laughs>